Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk about free fall problems in physics. Our goal is going to be to utilize our kinematic equations and our understanding of how the world works to solve problems for ob objects moving at a constant acceleration in free fall. And free fall basically means you have an object that is moving in a vertical plane with no external forces on it other than gravity. That means it can't be in your hand when you're talking about free fall. It can't be attached to a chain or a string. It is only acted upon by gravity. So that means we're going to have to neglect air resistance. If we drop a ball in a sheet of paper, for example, it's pretty obvious that they don't fall at the same rate. If we could remove all the air from the room, however, we would find that they fall at the same rate. And Commander David Scott actually did this in an Apollo mission to the moon where he dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time. And you can find the video if you look it up on Google or YouTube and you can see the hammer and feather fall at the same rate. They hit the ground at the same time. So we will analyze objects neglecting air resistance, which is really a form of friction. Now, near the surface of the Earth, Objects in free fall accelerate downward at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared toward the center of the Earth. Of course it's toward the center of the Earth because it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense if you were walking down the sidewalk you tripped and you fell up into space. Everything accelerates toward the center of the Earth. This 9.81 meters per second squared is a constant that we're going to learn this year. We give it the symbol little g. And it's typically known as the acceleration due to gravity. But that's a little bit of a misnomer. Really, we should be calling this the gravitational field strength. Because right now, as I hold my pen right in front of me, the it's not really accelerating. The acceleration due to gravity says it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Really, it's feeling a force from gravity, even though it's not accelerating. If I were to remove my hand and it started to fall downward, however, the acceleration of the pen would be 9.81 meters per second squared. Now g itself, this little g, we're always going to call positive. So g is 9.81 meters per second squared. But it's possible that something could have an acceleration of negative g, depending on how we set up our axis. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Finally, one other thing to keep in mind is that it's only 9.81 meters per second squared right near the surface of the Earth. As you get further away from the Earth, further out in space, g gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And on another planet that has a different gravitational field, you could have a different value for g. So g is 9.81 meters per second squared downward, and acceleration is a vector. It has a direction toward the center of the Earth. Now, if we're talking about objects falling from rest, if we drop something, if it's falling, it starts with an initial velocity of zero. Once we let it go, it will accelerate. Its speed will increase on its way down. But its initial velocity, its vi, will be zero. Now, remember when we were setting up our kinematics problems, we said we're going to call the direction of an object's initial motion positive. So since the object starts by falling, we'll call down here the positive direction. That means the object's velocity is going to be downward. That'll be positive. And since acceleration points down, that means that our acceleration a is going to be equal to positive g, because the acceleration vector points in the same direction as what we called positive y. Let's take a look at a sample problem. How far will a brick starting from rest fall freely in 3.0 seconds? And we're going to neglect air resistance again. Well, first off, we recognize that this is a vertical motion problem. We're going to call down the initial motion of the brick, the positive direction. And then we can make our vertical motion table, vi, vf, d, a, and t. Now, since it starts from rest or it's dropped, vi equals 0, we don't know vf in this problem. We're trying to find how far it falls. The acceleration, if we're calling down the positive y direction in the objects in free fall, acceleration and our positive y point in the same direction. That means our acceleration is plus g or plus 9.81 meters per second squared. 
and the time, of course, is 3 seconds. Now we can see that we know three things in our vertical motion table. We can use our kinematic equations to solve for either of the other two. Let's pick an equation that allow us to solve for d directly. If we use d equals vit plus one-half at squared, we start with our formula. We substitute in with units. vi is zero, so right away that term becomes zero. d equals one-half at squared, or d equals one-half times 9.81 meters per second squared times our time of three seconds squared. When I put that into my calculator, I should get an answer of about 44 meters. Pretty straightforward. Now, not all objects fall from rest. Occasionally, we may do something like toss an object up, come back down eventually. But as it goes up, it starts at its highest speed the moment it leaves your hand. And it slows down, slows down, slows down. For a split instant, it stops. Then it comes back down starting at a low velocity and going faster and faster and faster and faster. And what's really nice about these problems is they're very symmetric. If you toss an object up from one point and catch it at the same point, the speed that it leaves your hand with on the way up will be exactly equal to the speed of the object right before you catch it, the moment before it touches your hand. It'll take the same amount of time to go up as it takes for it to come back down as well. So we can use symmetry of motion to help with these problems. Now, because the object's initial motion is up, we're going to call up our positive y direction. That means since positive y points up, and we know the acceleration of the object due to gravity is down, they point in opposite directions. So our acceleration is going to be negative g, or negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Other helpful thing is at its absolute highest point, when the object reaches the peak of its motion, Right there, our velocity is going to be zero. That gives us one other item that we know in these problems. So let's take a look at a sample or two and see if that doesn't help us understand what's going on. A ball thrown vertically upward reaches a maximum height of 30 meters above the surface of the Earth. At its maximum height, the speed of the ball is what? Well, if we have a ball, we throw it up at its highest point for a split second it stops as a velocity of zero, and then it comes back down. So what's its speed at the highest point? Zero meters per second. That easy. Let's take a look at another one. A basketball player jumps straight up to grab a rebound. If she was in the air for 0.8 seconds, how high did she jump? All right, this one's a little bit more involved. Our basketball player jumps up, comes back down, and she was in the air for 0.8 seconds. Now, what's going to make this problem easier is realizing that at her peak, her velocity was zero. That will give us one more piece of information. Let's take a look at her motion on the way up. So as she jumps up, the direction of her initial motion is upward, so that's the plus y direction. If we take a look, just in the 0.4 seconds it takes her to reach her peak, that means this is going to be our VF. VF equals zero. We don't know what VI is here when she starts, but we can start to make our vertical motion table. VI, VF, D, A, T. VI we don't know. VF on the way up is zero. The time to get from where she starts to her highest point is 0.4 seconds. She was in the air a total of 0.8 seconds. So t is 0.4 seconds in this problem. Now we only know two things so far. We've got to figure out a third. Well, the basketball player is in free fall. The only force affecting her while she's in the air, assuming we neglect air resistance, will be the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity points down. Since that's in the opposite direction of what we called positive, our acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We now know three things. We can find the other two. We're looking for how high did she jump or her displacement right when she's here at that highest point. So that's our find. And we don't know VI. Well, if I look 
do I have any equations, V, F, D, A, and T, that have just those four things in them? No, I've got to go and solve for V, I first. But that's pretty straightforward. We can use V, F equals V, I plus A, T. To find V, I, let's just rearrange that. V, I equals V, F minus A, T. Or V, I equals 0 minus negative 9.81 meters per second squared times our time of 0.4 seconds. And that gives us, negative times a negative is a positive, gives us a VI of 3.92 meters per second. So this is no longer unknown. VI is 3.92 meters per second. Now I can solve for the displacement. I can use any formula that gives me displacement, but probably the easiest one is to go for D directly using d equals vit plus one-half a t squared. Substitute in with units. d equals 3.92 meters per second times our time of 0.4 seconds plus one-half times a negative 9.81 meters per second squared times our time squared 0.4 seconds squared and I find out that our total displacement, when I plug all of this into our calculator, comes out to be about 0 0.78 meters. It's a reasonable number for a vertical leap for a basketball player. So, pretty good there. Let's look at another one. Now we have a ball that is thrown straight downward with the speed of 0.5 meters per second from a height of 4 meters. What is its speed 0.7 seconds after it is released? Well, this is going to be a vertical motion problem again. It starts off going down, so down is our positive y direction, and now we can make our vertical motion table. VI, VF, D, A, T. In this case, it's not dropped, it's thrown down. Its initial velocity is 0.5 meters per second. And it's a positive 0.5 meters per second because it was thrown downward. And over here, we called down the positive y direction. We don't know VF. We're trying to find that. What is its speed? Displacement. Here's a little trick. If you look at this problem, it doesn't say the ball travels 4 meters. It says it was released from a height of 4 meters. So we don't know the displacement yet. They're throwing a trick in there. We do know the acceleration. If down is positive y and acceleration points down, because our acceleration is due to gravity, that must be positive 9.81 meters per second squared. And we want to know the ball's speed 0.7 seconds after its release. So t equals 0.7 seconds. If we're looking for vf, I know vi, a, and t. I can use vf equals vi plus a, t or VF equals 0.5 meters per second as I substitute in with units plus 9.81 meters per second squared times our time of 0.7 seconds or VF equals about 7.4 meters per second. Of course, it makes sense that the final velocity should be greater than the initial velocity because if you throw it down with a little bit of speed, as it go, travels further and further vertically downward, it should increase in speed because it's accelerating toward the center of the Earth. So that makes sense, 7.4 meters per second. Let's take a look at one last problem. Now we have a quarter kilogram baseball thrown upward with the speed of 30 meters per second. If we neglect friction, Find the maximum height reached by the baseball. Well, again, this is a vertical motion problem. And the initial motion of the baseball is up. So let's call up the positive y direction. Now we can make our table. VI, VF, D, A, and T. Now. Our initial speed upward is 30 meters per second. That's positive because we called up positive. We want to know the maximum height reached by the baseball, so we're trying to find displacement and acceleration due to gravity since the ball is in free fall. Acceleration points down toward the center of the Earth. 
Since A is in the opposite direction of what we called positive, this must be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. But we only know two things. We need three. Well, what we can remember is as the baseball comes up, if we want to know its maximum displacement, right there, its final velocity will be zero. It comes to a stop for an instant. So we know VF equals zero in our problem find the maximum displacement. VI, VF, D, and A, that tells me that I should be using a kinematic equation with those variables, or VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Rearrange that for the variable I want, D, and find D equals VF squared minus VI squared over 2A. Now I can substitute in with units, d equals 0 squared minus vi squared, 30 meters per second squared, all over 2 times the acceleration, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Get to work on my calculator, and I should come out with something pretty close to about 45.9 or 46 meters, about half a football field. All right, there's a couple samples and a good way to get you started. For next steps, why don't you see if you can create your own dropped object problem. Make it fun, find something interesting to drop, um, and then see if you can solve it. And do the same thing for an object tossed vertically upward. See if you can make your own problem and solve it. And then check, do your answers make sense? And of course, if you're stuck, you can always go to aplusphysics.com for more information. Thanks. Have a great day.